Go. Boom. Takes a second. There it goes. Yo, you there? Yeah, man, I'm here. Okay, cool. I'm going to do the little intro. Okay, right on. So, On Call Podcast, episode 42, 41? It's in the 40s, people. Uh, here with uh, my cousin's cousin, my cousin, Primo, Joel Benavidez. What's up, bro? What's up, Primo? How you doing, man? Chilling, man. You at work today or what? Yeah, I was at work for like 7 to 7, and then I just uh, I got home, and I work at a healthcare facility, so I have to wash the COVID off. <laughs> so I washed it <laughs> off, and and uh I, we were talking on the way uh, on the uh, as i was driving home and uh yeah. and you were like let's do this so here i am man impromptu nice, uh bro. podcast I, oh i was fuck hold on my this camera sucks i'm trying to get another camera why well, you know i thought I, got. I thought we should talk about that i wanted to talk about like for a little while like i don't know if you're down uh like podcasting and stuff yeah, man, for sure. Um, I'm still figuring out the. You kind of have to figure out the Skype shit now because where the fuck are? Oh, there you are. You're like a little tiny circle, dude. I can't. Even you know see what? You. you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna stop screen sharing, uh, and then that should. Oh, I mean, because, oh, there you are. Is, is that better for you? Yeah, it's is, good for me. Was it good for you? It was very good <laughs> for me, dude. <laughs> so yeah, I'm getting used. I'm pretty good with the USB mic and skype but since i don't have a laptop uh-huh. it's always a camera issue so uh-huh. i bought this camera that i thought was good i read it online but for some reason it fucks up and it stops like whenever i did that uh, that god episode um it kept stopping and i'd have to plug it back in and press the the right you know thing and i had to do it like three four times and i was getting upset and then I found this other camera online that I need to get. I just need to pull the trigger, but uh, yeah. I, I, I should, I dude, I should apologize. I, I have not listened to the God episode yet. How did that go? It went good. I thought it was fun. It was like, uh, oh, I put, po- I tagged him in it. I thought he was going to repost it, but, um, it was, a, a friend, my friend, Micah, mm-hmm. who, um, I think he's like two or th- I think he's a two or three, maybe four years older than me. I don't know. But, um, we both went to Christian school together and his brother, my friend, Jeremy Galindo, he was all, that's his younger brother. So it was kind of like, Oh, my friend's older brother kind of thing. But Uh I just thought of him because he was very, uh, I don't know about now. I don't think he's as, uh, as Christian, but he was down to do it, man. He was just like, yeah, dude, I'll do it. I was, he was like, I'll put glasses on. And he kind of sat in the dark outside and it came out good. Was he in character, like the way an actor oh, yeah. gets in character? Oh yeah. yeah, he he was like, "Hell, hell's not real." And I asked him about, I asked God about Scientology, and I thought it was fun. It doesn't get, it didn't get many listens because a lot of people who listen to my podcast they're churchgoers, so a lot of I got a lot of negative feedback from doing the God series. The first, it didn't get any listens except for mine because I told my wife, "Play this shit on repeat, please." <laughs> get the on numbers on Spotify, up. right? And then, right. Uh, of course, I listen to it on the act. I listen to it right when I post it when it comes up on Spotify to make sure it doesn't sound like crap. Right, or there wasn't like uh, like bit loss or anything like that. Yeah. No, dude. I think the most listens I've ever gotten is maybe maybe 150, 200. But I promoted the fuck out of that one. It was the Rob's Metalworks, the first one. That one got a lot of listens, but man, I promoted that thing for like three weeks. It's like every other day. I was like, oh man. I was like, that's why people hire people to do this shit. And then it's not even. But then I started thinking, I was like, I don't really care about that. I always think about Jamie. You know, you always hear Joe Rogan where he's like, Jamie, could you look that up? And Jamie and like knowing what I know about like uh, OBS and like mixing and scene transitions and like just like the technology behind it. Like, you know, Jamie's doing like I don't even know the guy's last name. I don't think but I think everybody knows Jamie. Young next Jamie. To, right, young yeah. Jamie. Yeah. Uh, is it young Jamie? I don't know. You have to take a shot on this podcast. Anytime you say Joe Rogan, you got to take a shot. There you go. Oh, dude, here it is. All right. I'll drink my uh, I'll drink my caffeinated water 
I don't I don't take in spirits, but bro, I don't want to be a, like bourgeois, but like I'm <laughs> drinking whiskey neat, so I have to sip it, dude. <laughs> well, you have to take a sip, a strong sip. Of it was your whiskey a, neat. it was it was a moderate sip of whiskey. Yeah. Neat. <laughs> The last podcast I did, um, it was my cut, my friend's cousin. He was drinking and he had a cup like yours. I think it was a whiskey and he fucking, I was like, oh, you got to take a shot. And he drank the whole shit. I was like, oh damn, dude. I was like, oh shit. And he was like, oh, wow. we were talking. He was like, wow, I'm kind of feeling that because he was doing like you, he was just sipping. And I was just like, oh, you got to take a shot. But he's like 22, 23. So he was just like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, you, you 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 don't think of the repercussions when you're that age. It's like, ah, oh, fuck it. <laughs> and also, I'm not drinking, so I was like, you have to take a shot. <laughs> right? Like, oh, you were like no. the like the like the uh, the risk free instigator. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'll drink my water. I'll take a sip of that. I gotta pee, maybe burp. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, man, but like Jamie, like Jamie, you know, you know, he's doing so much shit. Because especially his podcast, because I don't listen to his unless it's somebody I like. Like it had uh, the one he did with Donnell Rollins and uh, the RZA. I watched that one <clears throat> and it was funny because Donnell Rollins, I think he was high as out of his mind. He was just talking shit. But every two seconds, like, oh, can you bring that up, Jamie? And he's like bringing up these random videos and then he gets mad. And it's like, no, that's not the one I'm talking about. It's like, well, motherfucker, he's not a mind reader. He doesn't hang you, out with you on your off time you, you don't think you, i don't know man i i think joe rogan is extreme fuck yeah uh, uh, uh. <laughs> um i think joe rogan uh fuck i just did it again dude one sip <laughs> okay just say jre there you go. <laughs> i think He's really diplomatic with like Jamie and everybody else. Maybe you've seen an episode I haven't, but I think for the most part, he's got like a really clear, cool head. Like that's one of the things I, 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 maybe it's I not admire videos. about him. Yeah. Maybe it's not videos. Maybe it's sometimes when he has them bring up like, um, um, like, oh, well, you know, the newspaper said this many people died or not died, but you know, stuff like that, like. He'll he'll be like, no, I think it was this. Like, there's a couple times, but like I said, I really don't listen or watch his stuff unless I started. I listened to part of the Post Malone one. That one was it was okay. It was pretty yeah, good. Post yeah. Malone is fucking out there. He was talking about how he hangs out with aliens, and I was like, what? It was weird. I think yeah, I think he was just like acting or like putting on a show. But you know, yeah. you know what I thought was really cool, and I was like, I went to, into my daughter's room, and I was like, here, you gotta listen to this. And there's a game that like uh, kids like, you know, uh, six through 15 or whatever, you know, approximately uh, are into and it's Roblox. I don't know if you've ever played Roblox before. R-O-B-L-O-X. And no, it's, it's, so. it's kind of like Minecraft, but instead of like pixelated block characters, you have like these Lego looking characters right oh but it's like very generic or whatever and you can do different things with the lego creatures you can give them wings you can make them look a certain way different outfits and they just kind of adventure through this world but it's a little more structured and less pixelated than minecraft and huh. and so kids are into it right and uh and they make a sound in roblox when they die and he post malone talks about this in the episode and he and it's something like oof oof Right, so I do that twice, and po and Post Malone was talking to him about how he made it like a two-hour mix in the studio just with the like the death <laughs> oh, sound from I Roblox. Oh, I do remember it. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know why I just spent like two minutes talking about that, but <laughs> oh, you're fine. Yeah, my son's not really in. He's too young to be into games and stuff like that. He's. He's into his cars. He calls them meep meeps, his trucks and cars uh -huh. he plays with. And he's like, he watches all the Jurassic Park, Jurassic World movies. And he he watches some cool shit. He gets repetitive <clears throat> sometimes with like Shark Tale and fucking Elmo. Oh, my but, God. But you know what? You know why I think kids do this? And maybe I read this somewhere in like some like news article about a journal or something. But I think because it, it like provides them safety, right? Because uh, the world generally doesn't make sense. It doesn't come in in any like easily structured, you know, format. And so when they want to hear 
like just like us you know like we had our parents read us books at night like bedtime story or whatever and that's the idea of the bedtime story it's repetitive they know what's going to happen next and it provides like some set of, you know some sense of comfort yeah and you know that's why singing or humming or like kids are all about routine at least i mean we just have my son who's <clears throat> two years and a handful of months but yeah. he's he has his routines he likes to go outside he likes to watch his shows he eats his breakfast kind of running around the house like a psycho <laughs> yeah <laughs> just but yeah he's uh fresh out of fucks i see you i feel you I was gonna ask you what did he no, no 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 oh did not, I didn't I didn't, I didn't mean I didn't mean fresh out of fucks with reference to no no I know I said it dog it's all good <laughs> no I meant what was your, what is your tattoo I, I just saw oh uh, it's uh, muscle tissue oh that's what I thought it was I've just never seen like a clear shot of it that's yeah cool. um yeah it's uh I, I, it, he was my first episode uh, Bob rules he he's a tattoo artist that that, that did that. And so basically I took him uh, like a, an anatomy book and I was like, here you go, man. I was like, this is what I want. And I just showed him the picture of the arm. And so he, he ran with it. Hell yeah, man. It's you got, dope. you got a lot of work. I, I saw, I saw some of your work. Yeah, I got Mickey. I got this arm is pretty full. There's a couple spots I still need to get. Like over here. Are you gonna do like arm's... ambient fill in, or are you gonna put something like actually in there? Yeah, I'm gonna get um, I want to get a little bit more lettering kind of spread out through this arm. This arm I really don't give a shit about. This is like my dark, scary arm, and then this one has more like, you know, happy shit, cartoons, a little anime, not anime, but um, uh, my neighbor. Oh, so you got like a like a two faced Gemini, uh, yin yang kind of theme going kind on with your arms, yeah. yeah. Well, this arm was almost empty, except I had one visible tattoo <clears throat> here of my cousin Mikey, who passed away, or Justin and I's cousin Mikey, well, the whole side of the family, and yeah. um, I got that, and then pretty much that the right arm was just empty, and then this arm, I just kept, I was like in a, I guess I was in a, my drug phase, or my, I don't know what you'd call it, my, uh, god damn it, it's fucking camera. Yeah, it, did, I mean, it didn't bother me, like, it's, it's yeah. fine, it'll pick up, I, your audio's coming in great awesome yeah but um yeah so this that other arm is just kind of like a lot of dark you can tell i didn't put a lot of thought into it just kind of like oh i want to want to put a fucking a bird with a bunch of blood i don't know and i actually had my main tattoo artist do the podcast she came over to the house yeah and uh we did it kind of we did it social distance outside so i just brought my little um my zoom h4n outside and her and i just did it it was cool. What is that? The Zoom H4n. Um, man, I don't have it. It's uh, it's like a little recorder. Uh huh. And uh, it's like studio quality. I name drop. I listen to Mark Marin a lot, and I always look up what kind of equipment he uses because his shit always sounds really good. And I saw that whenever he travels, he pretty much just uses the Zoom. And I was like, oh, wow. So I looked into it and all these podcasters started using it. And then there's that old saying, like, whenever you, whenever you buy your car, you start to see your car. Like, Everywhere, before yeah. you had it, you never saw it. Uh -huh. So I started looking at other all these other podcasts and videos, and they all had that thing. They all had it. So I was huh. like, man, I'm going to check it out. And at the time, you can, you can get it now for like two two and a two and a quarter or something and is but it like I got, a it kit like, like it has like a pair of mics and uh like a headphone jack the, or what i mean what is it the new the new ones do the new ones come with like uh it, it, it automatically comes with like two microphones built in that you could like a lot of reporters use it like when they're interviewing people Ooh. like close up they'll you'll see it but you can plug in mics and it has the phantom power built in so you literally you don't even need to plug it in. You can just put batteries in this and you just plug in the mics and you talk and it's stereo quality. It's wow. Pretty good. And then it, so it, 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 does, it, it like uh, turns it into MP3 format or M MP4. Yeah, yeah. You can choose the format you want um, on the actual thing. I think I have mine as uh, just MP4 and uh, yeah, you just put a little memory card in there and you can get it. It's got like 10 folders, but yeah, it's, that's what I started using. Because when we first started, my friend Josh and I, we would do, we would just talk into the laptop. Because I was like, been talking about doing a podcast for like two years. And finally, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I got this decent laptop from work. I'm just going to 
was like, let's just talk into it for now and we'll see how it sounds. And the first couple episodes, I think I took them down from SoundCloud because they were one of them. Uh, my friend Zarati, he made me take one down because <laughs> he told this story and I, I said something kind of we were drink. I was drinking at the time and I had said something that he was like, no, you can't put that up. People are going to think the wrong thing. And I was like, OK, I was like, all right. So then it became more of because we were just in my friend's front yard drinking and smoking and being fucking idiots. And we we're all like talking into the laptop. And then I, I didn't even listen to it back. I just posted it on SoundCloud right then and there. How, how long so ago I, was this? Oh, this was 2014 or 15. Wow, whenever we so first you've been started at this doing. for a while. Yeah, it's been a while. But I went How many a episodes? Of, how, like, how many like uh, entries? Do, are, are you paying for SoundCloud? Do you have like the extended Not setup? anymore. I stopped the paying for it because I figured out I can I all I have to do is pay for the membership and then I can get all the those episodes back. But yeah, I was just paying like the what is it like 15 bucks a month yeah. just to, so you can release more than like 4 hours of content. It's yeah. Just, it's a little it's, it's a little asinine. You could do like you could upload it to YouTube. You know what I mean for free. Exactly. And but at the time I didn't care cuz this podcast that I liked a lot that you can't find anymore it was called The Mimosa Boys. And it was uh -huh. these, uh, it was like this producer slash Christian rapper guy, Dustin Cavazos, uh -huh. and his his buddies, and they would record, and they had some good episodes, and they had they only dropped it on SoundCloud, and I was they had an episode with Selena's nephew, and he told a story about this producer Mike Dean who does all of like Kanye shit, bleh, and uh, I don't like Kanye, sorry. Well, Hot he, take. I mean, I he's know. he's not a popular guy, but anyway, you were saying. Did oh, he's very popular, actually. He's just I'm not popular to me, I guess, because his whole Trump thing, like, if you want to be a Trump person, that's cool. Respect. But the thing that aggravated me is he said, oh, I didn't even vote on the election, but he's like a Trump guy. I'm like, well, no, you can't do that. I mean, you can. You can do whatever you want, but I just, oh. we have to pray for Trump real quick. You want to pray for Trump? Okay, I'm down. Let's do it, man. <laughs> All right, hold up. Yeah, go ahead and pray. I'm going to okay. cross my hands or cross my hand. You can tell I pray a lot. <laughs> there we go. Go ahead and say a prayer for Donald Trumpy. Oh, shit. You're putting me on the spot. Yeah, man. say a prayer. Dear God, Dear... <laughs> please um... make me a bird so I can fly far. <laughs> um, oh, man. Um... You, don't have, you don't have to fucking pray for him if you don't want to. I was <laughs> just joking. No, I was just trying to come up with something like clever and smart and funny and a trump, and a trump supporter would start the prayer off like this hold on let me fix my microphone okay or my fucking my motherfucking camera this is how trump supporters pray for trump because you know trump is god right so they say dear donald trump please pray for donald trump help him feel better i know he doesn't really have this disease but he's trying to win votes because he was a piece of shit at the, uh, you know, what is that thing? I haven't slept a lot today. At the... Uh, at the rally? Or at the election? At the debate? No, not at the Nazi rally. I mean, the debate. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> but no, that's... Everyone, I just... I'm glad I got off Facebook, because... Oh, my God. It's like a shit show with politics right now. God damn it. It is. It's a total shit show with politics. And you know what? Like, I think I, I contributed to that, you know, like back when I was in my hardcore leftist phase or whatever. Um, oh, I did too. Like that. But I was a card carrying member of the fucking Socialist Party, like the actual Socialist Party. Yeah. I, I actually, always respected that about you. Well, oh man, I, I don't know. Like it's, uh, well, like we talked about last time, you know, it was like a very educational experience and it was a unique, the whole thing was awesome. But I, I just, like I said, like, I think like the radical thought in either direction, like is, I mean, it's nice to be passionate about something, but when you're that staunch on a particular issue, it's not going to get any better like compromise will make it better and so like I, lately uh, man i just wish things were more more bipartisan i remember uh when we grew up like i said before before like uh before newt gingrich it was just like 
the the kind of politics we have now are just insane. You know, they're fucking crazy. Well, even like the debate, I I watched it. I was like, you know what? I want to watch this. I ha- I've been kind of out of the not out of the loop. I still check, but I haven't really followed the election too much. Like, mm-hmm. of course, I wanted Bernie to win. He didn't. I knew he wasn't going to. He's just whatever. So he once Biden was on the ticket and he picked his, you know, his vice and all that. When I saw the first debate, I was like, I know how this is going to go. I knew exactly how it was going to go. And I saw that they were doing it on Hulu. So I was like, fuck it. So I turned it on because first we were letting our son watch his shows, but it was kind of time for him to go to sleep. So I was like, let's put something on that he's not going to pay attention to. And I'll try to like rock him to sleep or whatever. And I was yelling cursing so much at the tv and i was just like all i was doing is like shut the fuck up like let him talk like that's all i was saying and it was just like oh and then after it was over i felt dizzy i was like man i feel like i need to smoke a cigarette <laughs> i don't even smoke cigarettes anymore i was just like oh and it just like solidified like well i'm definitely gonna vote that's all it solidified because yeah it was <sighs> I, I just don't I've I've never like I've always tried to to go in and look at the individual candidates like further down the ballot and like establish like well you know like especially in primaries like who does that, who does their fucking research in primaries right when you're yeah, gonna for sure. choose between you know one Democrat and another or one Republican and another and uh, <clears throat> I like I always wanted to do that and I just never had a chance maybe I'll maybe I'll get around to that. Go yeah. look. because you know there are some issues like in some arenas where i might lean more to the right for example like the possession of guns like i like we could talk about guns if you want right yeah go for it dude. yeah i okay. don't own a gun yeah but... uh, so like uh like with guns i i think the constitution is the highest law of the land like looking at it from like a purely uh non-emotional aspect you know that is the highest law of the land the constitution every law that comes after has to fall into the parameters of the constitution and like the constitution says that the reason for the second amendment is in order to for the for the citizenry to protect themselves from the government if the government government, ever became tyrannical it has like nothing to do with with hunting and so that to me sounds like a good reason you know whether it's us talking about you know somebody on the left or the right i i I think it's a uh, you know a good reason because anybody could really take us tyrannical and uh and it's happened several times through history you first say that to people and they think it's a little ridiculous but you know it's happened several times like with hitler that was a democracy before hitler took it i believe and then uh and then like what's happened what happened in syria like 10 years ago like all that stuff like it's just i mean it happens and i want to say it's happened in some western countries i just can't think of which ones where you know the government just goes fucking ape shit all of a sudden yeah so um not that there would be a war between the citizenry but i just i don't know i think like the army would be less likely to fire on its own people if they were armed you know what i mean definitely but i mean like i we didn't grow up in a house where there was guns so that so i didn't grow up around guns Mm -hmm. my mom she had a big uh she didn't like guns. They scared her. So, And my dad was never a gun person either. So I didn't start seeing guns until I was in my early 20s when my cousins were buying guns and going shooting. And I went with them. And it was fun. It was cool. I liked it. And then uh, I started buying a gun from my cousin, Ricardo. And then it – I don't remember exactly why. Mm-hmm. But um, he was like, I don't want to sell it after all. So I kind of gave it back. And he paid me back what I had paid him for it. But I just remember – my cousin told me one story because I, I used to have a bad temper, especially when I was hungover. So I was driving to work and this guy cut me off so bad. I almost hit a fucking pole on Bandera Road. Like I got on part of the curb and I almost hit this pole. I was like, mother. And then he shot me the finger. And then, of course, it's Bandera Road in the morning traffic. So we stop and I'm right behind him. And I lost. I lost it. I like flicked my cigarette out. I grabbed the bat from the back of my seat. 
and I walked up to his car. <laughs> I don't know what I said. And this is a big old boy, like a, I guess a good old boy. I don't know right. what that means. Uh, but... Yeah, yeah, you get the yeah. idea. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, uh, I walked up to his car, and I was like, "Get out of the fucking car!" And I was, cur- I don't know, like. I blurred my curse word out. Dude, even if it wasn't my fault, you came up to me while I was in my car talking to me like that. I'd probably like shit myself, dude. He, he like was like, oh shit. And he drove off really fast and like cut a bunch of people off and got away. I was like, well, let me get back in my car. So I got back in my car and I started sipping on my coffee. I was like, what's wrong with me? I was like, I understand. <laughs> my cousin told me that story. He's like, and you want to have a gun? I'm like, yeah, it's probably a good, good call that you didn't give me the gun or sell me the gun. But that was a different time. I was major fucking issues with my temper yeah so you heard that donald trump's sick right yeah yeah he's got covid yeah okay (laughs) Mm. um did you feel do you feel like do you think he's really sick or do you think this is uh so so you so i so so i i work in a healthcare setting and my co-worker brought this up to me this morning right and she kind of worded it the same way she said you know do you think it's real or it's a hoax right and she knew you know she probably just hadn't connected the two items yet right as did i that when a sample hits the lab like it goes through several checks in order to make sure that it's that person you know that time that place you know it's like they've got all these parameters to meet and then they double check and triple check and it gets checked when it gets moved like from print format to label and there's all these like different parameters in place so you know if it wasn't the scientific process you know that was driving it then it's all these parameters and principles and and so long story short i don't see how the the doctors the nurses and the technicians could fake or participate in that you know what i mean his physician his physician if it's not real is going to come out and say i didn't say that you know i never diagnosed him with that uh same thing with the nurses same thing with the lab techs you know what i mean to some yeah, degree because people are putting their kind of putting their name on it so it's kind of well yeah i see your point so you know what i mean yeah and so i and she and that's exactly what she said she was like oh yeah i see you yeah you're right they they wouldn't be able to get away with it you know like i mean just the shit that we do you know uh i mean it, it's just it's very it's a very structured system i guess is what i'm trying to say well it's 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 crazy that you know i'll put i'll put political and i'm not gonna say i feel one way or another about it because i don't because he said some awful things about a lot of people so I don't think of it like I, I don't wish anybody well, there's a few people I wish would die, but I don't <laughs> wish anybody de- I don't wish anybody death, you know what I mean? But right. you know, I don't feel pity, I don't feel sorry. I'm not like I'm not like a lot of people who are saying yeah, like, all right, oh, all well, right. yeah. like like <laughs> all right, you like know. Biden like Biden took down I I think what Biden did was stupid. He took down all of his uh his promos and videos and stuff that are like kind of making Trump look to be like a bad person. I was like, well, why did you do that? You already said you're going to pray to your God and hope he feels better, better and all that shit. That's cool. Like you took the high road. I get it. But man, man no, the thing is like the Democrats, I don't know what is up with the DNC and the leadership, but they have made bad choices on the run up to these last two elections. You know, the one yeah. where oh, tr- Trump took office, you know, I think they dropped the ball with Hillary. They really did. You know, and oh, they yeah. and, 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 and with both those candidates, with Biden and Hillary, like they're they, I mean, they look like they're on death's door, you know, and it's the fucking election. So, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I, it's not ageist. I'm not trying to be like ageist or, or to say that that, you know, Biden's too old or Hillary was too old. Uh, you know, but there's cognitive effects that happen with age through the natural process. And some of them are evident on both of those people. And I thought that that was a huge mistake. And I was really disappointed with the DNC at that, at that point. So I'm I'm I'm, kind of, so, so in a sense, I'm kind of, uh, what's the word? Just like, I, I don't know. There's a fancy bougie word for it, but I'm just tired of the bullshit. (laughs) (laughs) 
Jamie, what's that word? Queued up? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, you know, I just, I'm very disappointed too in our part, my party or your whatever, but it's, it's, I think, I think Trump getting elected was inevitable. Right when I saw him come down on that escalator at Trump Towers or the Nazi Tower, whatever, <clears throat> sorry. I mean, uh, Trump Tower, sorry. <laughs> I was, right when I saw that, I was like, They're, we're going to elect him. And I was there with a friend of mine at a hotel. I won't drop name. And I said, I was like, he's going to win. He's going to win. And he was like, no, he's not, dude. He's a fucking idiot. I was like, no, he's going to win. He was like, why? I was like, because this is exactly what America wants right now. They want a, a bankrupt, you know, shady businessman to run the country because well, I just it's I, like, I felt it. it. Yeah, it's like uh, like I think I mentioned Ray Dalio last time. He's kind of I'm kinda, I'm kind of like a fanboy. This dude, he's like the the founder of the largest hedge fund uh, you know, in history or whatever, Ray Dalio. And he talks about economic cycles. He's got a 30-minute video. If you want to understand how the economy works and watch a send cartoon. Yeah, I'll send it. And 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 watch a cartoon at the same time, a decent cartoon. I was actually watching it and my two year old nephew sat down quietly for like the first 15, 20 minutes and watched oh, wow. it with me. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it'll hold a child's attention, you know, but it's uh, how the economic machine works. It's on YouTube. And, uh, and he talks about the whole cycle, you know, from start to finish, but then he draws parallels while, you know, the economy is booming or busting or whatever, what happens politically. And on this approximately 10 year cycle, you know, we have a financial crisis every 10 years. Right. And this, uh, this last one before, I guess before COVID, uh, was 2007 or whatever, uh, the Mr. 2008 financial Mr. Bush. Crisis. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, you know, he talks about the, the, the social unrest, the political uprising and the change of houses. And, uh, I think, I think Obama was one of those. And, and so was, so was Trump, you know, and it's just in the opposite direction. So, yeah. And, and, uh, and, and, and the, but the th my, I guess my point is, is that it happens on a cycle. It's predictable. Yeah. And so and you're, if, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. And if, no, no, no. And I, if Trump, you know, I, I'm not. Trump's not going to get my vote, but he's I, he's going to win again. You know, he's going to he's going to he's going to get better from this covid thing. You know, there already I already saw talks and retweets of people saying that they need to cancel the elections because it's not the Chinese virus anymore. It's the coronavirus because Trumpy has it. So my my thing is just like, well, if he wins again, that's fine. I, I mean, it's I don't have a. I can't make him not get elected, you know. I'm not gonna, but it's he'll be fine. It'll be fine. But we'll as a live. Democrat, you kind of see the writing on the wall. Yeah, I mean, it's it's what look at the election cycles: Democrat, Republican, Democrat, Republican. Bush, that was a one-term president. Clinton came in. <clears> I actually looked. I looked at that exact pattern you're talking about yeah. once, and but but also like in the criteria was whether it was a one-term president or a two-term president. And there seems mm -hmm. to be like a larger pattern associated with one-term presidents. Like it's like in in other words, you get a lot of like doubles, double terms, and then every now and then you'll get a single term, and that happens like over like I don't know more elections. As opposed to you know the 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 party pattern you know the Democrat Republican yeah. it does go back and forth but I, I was looking at it in terms of uh, of terms right so it's like how many terms did the Democrats maintain control of the of the White House and sometimes it was two sometimes it was three every now and then it was that one term democratic president and like, same I thing think, with the republicans I, I think the last time we had a one-term president was uh jimmy carter i think he was a one-term president right yeah i think he was too and yeah. uh and and the, and the last one-term uh republican president was bush senior. yeah bush yeah. and i wasn't around i wasn't even alive when jimmy carter was elected but uh, sorry <laughs> <laughs> um but i just remember um my I have my my father, my dad was like he was the worst president we ever had. And I was I remember researching it at the time. I was, you know, this is when I was like super duper liberal, kinda 
John Kerry loving kid. And I looked up his presidency and I was like, it wasn't that bad. I mean, it was, it, I, but I was like, I didn't live at that time. So I didn't know, but I just remember when the first Bush was president and I was very young, but I just remember, I was like, oh wow, we're like going to war. And that was the first time me as a kid was like, oh fuck, we're going to war. Like, that's crazy. And then it seemed like it was over very fast. And then, of course, with Bush. It know. was. It was like 100 hours. Desert yeah. Storm 1 was like 100 hours long. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I don't know enough about that war. But, you know, I know Afghanistan was going to happen no matter who was president. That's just. Yeah. What happened on 9-11, whether you believe it was us or who, but no matter what. What do you think about the 9-11, the, the 9-11 uh, commission report? Dude, I, I don't know. I. People say it was an inside job. But you know, in I, what's inside? Is it the government? Research. Is it the is it is it the 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 corporate structure? You know what I mean? Like there's just I mean, same thing with Kennedy, dude. Think? Let's fucking take it to Kennedy. My daughter oh, I love, You know what? That's the first time I met you was at Justin's and his um wife's party. You were there with your wife and I was wearing a Kennedy shirt and we talked about that for a little oh, bit. I remember that you were was the only you. Ooh, yeah, dude. you were the only person there not smoking weed. I just remember that. I was like, oh, this guy doesn't smoke. That's crazy. Because I was, uh, you know, I was smoking a lot at that time. And I was just like, oh, but I just remember we talked about Kennedy briefly. And you had said something. I don't remember exactly what we talked about, but I was, was just this like, was oh, man. when they lived in the apartment. It was in the patio. Yeah. And, I, and we sat down yes. in the patio. No shit. We've been talking this whole time. I didn't realize that we had spoken before. That's crazy. I when did you realize that? Yeah, I was editing the podcast and I was like, I have fucking talked to him before at that party. I remember, but but yeah, Kennedy, oh my god. I mean, who how to where to start with Kennedy? Where to start? He was huh. He was like the last like when it comes to families, he was probably his family is probably my favorite, the Kennedys in general. The up uh, the I can't remember the Kennedy now. He's like a, a non-vaxxer. I can't remember his name. But him, I'm like, eh, he's he's a little he's a little uh little sus. Is that what the kids say? Sus? Sus? <laughs> oh, I yeah, I've heard sus. my daughter say I have no idea what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I think it means suspect. Oh, I, say, I don't okay, know why I don't okay, think okay. suspect. <laughs> but no, I, I liked I like John F. Kennedy. He was always my favorite president, even when yeah. I was a little kid. Like I was always fascinated with the fact that Misfit song, of course, you know, he was killed in Dallas. He was killed. And I just what, always... what, what about that? Uh, what about that? Uh, 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 shiny toy gun song. The what? Do you know shiny toy guns? Oh, the band. Yeah. Uh, what's they, the song? They sing the disco. The girls, the disco. No. Anyway, they're f Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> wow. I don't listen to music anymore. <laughs> really? Uh, well, she's hot, right? On a, just on a footnote, but <laughs> I'm always oh, yeah. gonna bring up when they're hot, dude. Just get used to it. Like hot, and if they're not hot, you just don't say anything. You're a gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, ah, oh, she's cool. Yeah, <laughs> she's, she's really, really but smart. No, that's, uh, man, I think that. They, anyway, ja, just to put a period here, uh, Shiny Toy Guns has a song called "Jackie Will Save Us." Mm. Anyway, but you, but uh, go on. Go on. That's it. That's all I want no, to say. No, I just. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> I just always liked Kennedy. I always liked his speeches. I always dug like his policy. And there's a lot of people now that were like, "Oh, if he was alive now, he'd be conservative." I was like, "No, he wouldn't." I don't know, like, man. The the statement "Ask not what your country can do for you; ask what you can do for your country." It's not also, a very entitled democratic thing to say. But he also was one of the first presidents to separate church and state that's if that's not a liberal thing democrat thing to do then i don't know what is because right now isn't that written into getting, the constitution isn't the constitution written by a bunch of christians it's in the it's in the right but they were it? also like trying to avoid religious persecution so so yeah. they, you know i don't know man uh, to me to me saying the pledge of allegiance i went to christian school so you had to say the pledge of allegiance the pledge to the christian flag and the pledge to the bible i always felt weird about doing all three of those i was like why are we doing this this is like brainwashy type shit 
like I get it. The flag, you know, these colors don't run, baby. I yeah. get it. <laughs> Rick and Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get why you have to do that. You have to pledge your allegiance to the flag. What? That's it's in itself. That sounds a little creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Like I've thought about that. You know what? You know, for some reason, you know what? The one that triggers me is, is the, the Texas, the pledge to the Texas flag. I, we used to have to do that one for a little while. Actually in summer school, I think we had to do it. Yeah. They're doing it was, now. Well, here in Texas, they are. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't remember. I, th I know that one seemed like a lot more complicated than the f American flag. Yeah, I don't know it. <laughs> I just to, pledging your allegiance to anything. I'm like, what? it's like you don't even have to do that in your marriage. Right. right? Yeah. <laughs> Did I, I pledge allegiance? <laughs> I was going to like say on your like, wedding. Day. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the 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 vows are pretty close to it, but that be that would be a little intense if you swore your allegiance. <laughs> I place like cut my hand and put it over my heart. <laughs> I well, I just remember when we got my wife and I got married. Um, we hired somebody off. I just found somebody online, and um, she was like, "Is this gonna be a religious?" Or she was kind of doing those, and I was like, "No." She was like, "Oh, really?" Like she got excited. I was just like. Yeah, no, it doesn't. I, we don't need to talk about religion, or we just want a nice intro. She was like, "Well, can I send you stuff?" I was like, "No, just I trust you." And the the rate she charged, I was like, "You you you better be good." In my head, I was like, "She was an ordained minister, or yeah, yeah, uh. she was an ordained minister." But apparently, she does a lot of church type um, ceremonies, and I was like, "No, we don't want that." Not to say we were like trying to do like a hippy dippy one but i was just like no because at that time i was well i guess that time hasn't you know changed i was just like no i don't want it to be religious i just want it to be very because it was just our immediate families at the wedding it wasn't there wasn't a lot of people and actually Corey was there our cousin oh Corey, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah he was there and it was it was good it was chill and then I just remember her being excited, like, oh, yeah, I have a lot. Of, yeah, I can do that. And it was very good. Like, what she said was good. I don't remember it. I was nervous as shit. But it was well, good. Well, that's her it, wedding. I mean, how old were you? Yeah. I was thir Fuck. Uh, 2018. So it was February 2018. So I was 30, 33. 33. And we announced our son's uh, gender at that's that. That's a good age. That's a good age to get married. Yeah, I'm a late bloomer. You know, I've been told. <laughs> well, dude, I was an early bloomer of shit. I got. When did uh, you get married? When did you meet? Let me ask you personal. Yeah. When did you get? When did you meet your wife and get married? So I was like 18, 19 when I went into the military. I was there for four years. When I came out, I was like 20. What is that? 23. Uh, or maybe 24. I, I can't do the maths right now but uh yeah and so she was 22 so you know i guess i was like 25 and she was like 22 when we got married so yeah. we were like super early my wife was 26 when we got married yeah she's younger than me <clears throat> yeah it's still pretty early yeah yeah but i just i just like the fact because we weren't we weren't huge on getting married like we knew we had talked about it and we were just kind of like well i mean we don't have to get married to raise a kid you know we don't you don't have to be and nobody really brought it up to us like everyone was excited that she was pregnant and all that and then something happened i don't know and then we just all of a sudden it's like let's get married we watched a movie true romance and then that kind of was like oh you can just go to a courthouse type thing and then it turned into do what they get inspired? married in the courthouse in true romance? No, we were going to, but uh -huh. you have to wait like that three or four days and then you can go to the courthouse and you can hire somebody to just do it for you or just bring a friend and just have the judge do it. What's but the name of guy, that famous chapel in, in Las Vegas that marries you like that? It's uh, oh, some it, kind of Elvis thing, right? Yeah, there's yeah. like a clever name to it. Chapel of Love or something? Oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's a Chapel of Love. Anyway, yeah. continue. That might just be from Back to the Future too. Anyways. Maybe. <laughs> You're probably right. <laughs> I just remember this guy came up to us. Nice guy. He had like the worst toupee I've seen in my life. And he was like, hey, 50 bucks. I can marry you guys. And he come back and he gave us his card. 
and he wrote something on the back of it. Excuse me. And my wife is like, I was like, <laughs> I just kind of laughed. I was like, you want him to marry us on Friday or what? And she just laughed and she was like, no. I was like, why don't we just hire somebody? We'll get some money together. We'll just do like a little ceremony. And it started out first. It was going to be at my parents' backyard. And then that changed because my dad was like, well, let's do it inside. I was like, we can't do it inside. I was just like, no. And then it turned into like, well, let me see if we can rent out the Live Oak pool house. And my mom was like, it's kind of hard to get it, but we were able to get it. So I was like, all right, cool. She was like, well, there's no alcohol. I was like, well, she's pregnant, so nobody's drinking. So so we ended up just doing it there, inviting a few people. Um, my brother paid for my tux, my older brother. And my mom and my dad bought my wife's dress, and she liked it a lot. And we did it, and I was like, I was nervous, I think. But I was more nervous about, I don't know. I was more nervous because we were going to have a baby. <laughs> so I was kind of like, there was a lot of things going on. But we were able to afford to go to Corpus for like a little mini honeymoon for that. It was like a four, we turned it into a four-day weekend. But yeah, it was it was cool. It was small. I had, Wait, on the run up to the marriage, you didn't have any kind of like feelings of oh, I don't know, like any sentimental like oh we should get married because there's gonna be a white dress and you know we're gonna be uh, king and queen for a night. And there was no like <laughs> uh, you know fictional stories that you heard that triggered like that desire to uh, do the whole wedding thing. I'll be honest with you. I thought about the Full House episode where J Uncle Jesse gets married. I just remember there was like I think stuck I remember in tomatoes, that. a tomato city, and I just remember there was tomatoes at the wedding. But <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I maybe that's a bride's thing. I I just I knew I wanted to get married to her. I never really thought about marriage in the past because I never really had a real lasting relationship with anybody. Did you have a model for that via your parents? Yeah. Oh, my parents are still married. They've been together for 30, 37 years. This, this coming year, it'll be 37 years or 38. And they're still married. They're very much in love. They, they kiss and shit. They're, you know, <laughs> they're like, they're, they've been married and, I always kind of, my dad always told us this thing. I don't, I don't think the same way, but he always put my mom before us kids and I have four brothers and he would always tell us like, you know, your mom comes first. I love her more than I love you guys. Holy and shit. And I was like, I was like, I was like, dude. And I remember when I was not young, but I asked my dad, I was like, if you had to choose who would <clears throat> die or not be born, would it be mom or us? He was like, oh y'all for sure. Like he didn't even hesitate. It was like. Like, yeah, your mom. I was like, was he joking like, or did, did No, he's dead serious, dead ass. And I don't know if he'd say that now because he has grandkids now. But I just remember at the time, I was like, dang, that's rough. And then I told a friend of mine, he was like, that's kind of cool that he thinks that way. Because he puts your, all he's saying is he puts your mom first. And I was like, yeah, it's kind of fucked up. And I think about it now, I'm like, oh, like there's going to be a scenario where he has to choose who's going to, you know what I mean? I start thinking about that. I'm like, <laughs> What kind of world are we living in where he's going to have to choose between well, his wife and Well, but it's kids? like it has to do with the, like an operating system, right? Because if you're going to prioritize one thing over another, it's likely that you're going to do make similar decisions, right? Yeah. I yeah, that <laughs> if somebody were to ask me that question now, I don't know. I'd say me, I'll die. Like <laughs> I'll die. It's, nobody I don't have to choose. I'll just kill myself and you'll figure it out. Like but yeah, yeah that's but I my, think... my model of how to treat a, a you know person you're interested in wife husband girlfriend whatever it was my dad because he always put my mom like on such a high pedestal he all to this day still it's my mom's always first which is i respect it's cool you know you yeah, don't agree it's beautiful, on everything you know in isolation and then it's like damn dude those are your kids <laughs> yeah like, you want me to die bro what's up <laughs> But no. I but wonder I mean, if he bonded with you a lot when you were a baby. No. Yeah. He wasn't there. I yeah, think that was... has a huge psychological impact, like subconsciously. You know, oh, I, I've talked to me and my therapist have talked about it for hours and hours. Yeah. He was he he worked uh, for my dad. He was moving up the ladder at work, so he didn't have time to be there as much as he was there for my younger brothers. You know, he was working. We we didn't start off 
with being middle class, we started off my we were living off Eisenhower. My dad was like an assistant manager. He was working his way up. So, yeah, he wasn't there. When he got home, he was tired from working a 17 hour day, you know, 14 days straight. So, yeah, he didn't have a lot of time to hang out with us and stuff. But he was a good dad. He didn't fucking touch me or beat me or anything like that. You know, it's yeah. just. But just I can some see random comments that like raised an eyebrow every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like my dad and I, we had some rough times for sure. Like I didn't talk to him for probably like two years. Just just, you know, drinking and talking shit to each other. And it just kind of progressed one day. And he said some things that, you know, I forgive now. I, you know, it's fine. It's not that I forgive. He's, he's, he doesn't really remember any of that because he was drinking a lot at the time. But I just remember when it happened, I was just like, what the fuck? And I just remember taking a lot of mental notes through my childhood and my adulthood, too. It's like, well, I'm not going to be that way with my kid if I ever have a kid. And I don't like I'm a very different father than my dad. You know, he even has told me before, like, I wish I was more of a hands on father with y'all because, like, he never changed our diapers. He didn't do any of that stuff. He's at work, you know, and I get it. Like, he was busting his ass. So That's can, sweet that know. he said that, though. Yeah. And I and I and that, you know, and he, he didn't say he was proud of me until my son was born. So I was just kind of like, oh, wow. <laughs> I was like, thanks. <laughs> well, but, I think as men, we tend to, like, uh, uh, maybe not compare ourselves, but you know, set standards based off of observation, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so maybe, you know, uh, he did have standards for you and he was paying attention. It was just, you know, he was going to raise you based off, or he was going to, he was going to make those assessments based off of what he saw in himself at the time. And that was an adult man. And so yeah. it makes sense that if he, if he, uh, saw you as a man working with a, you know, a family, you know, he was like, okay, there I am. That's something that I, I can yeah. reference currently. Uh, you know, I'm proud of you, son. Yeah. yeah. But then again, I don't tell the other stories of why he would probably not say he was proud of me because I was going through a lot of bad phases. I wasn't even living there, and I would get dropped off at my parents' house by friends, drunk and stoned out of my mind, and I would be sleeping on their front porch, or I would somehow get in the house and be asleep, like, in front of the front door, <laughs> like... You know, and I just remember him waking me up like, your mom is fucking crying. Get a taxi. Like, what are you doing? Why are you coming here? And, you know, I went through a lot of bad phases and they saw a lot of it. You know, I tried to hide a lot of it. But I mean, there's always those things. And I wouldn't want to see my son go through any of those things. So I can't even imagine as a parent how you think of your kid. But, you know, it took I was, you know, I went through a lot of shit. Yeah, and, man. But it was a lot. I brought it upon myself. So it's kind of like messing with chemicals and alcohol kind of to cope <laughs> with when I should have been going to therapy, meditating, you know, stop being angry at an, a God that I don't believe is there most of the time, unless I'm like scared, then I'll, I'll pray to him. <laughs> you know what? I heard something about that today. Somebody like, I think it was a, a it might have been Mars on Netflix. I don't know. Something I was watching and they were saying how, you know, they were saying how the saying that there are no atheists in foxholes is not true. It's true. It's yeah, not, it's not true. It's, it's like the the opposite is true. Like, uh, like nobody believes in God when they're in foxholes because if they believed in God that they would die in peace. But they're scared shitless in a fo You're scared shitless in a foxhole because you're, you're, you know, getting shot at and whatever. And so, exactly. so, so, you know, like in the, in that situation, you're going to pray because you're not sure about your soul or you're going to struggle to stay alive because you don't think you're going to heaven. Like, and it made, and it made sense. It was like, oh yeah, there yeah. are no atheists. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. The death, the death thing used to be my biggest fear. If somebody would ask me like, what's your biggest fear? It was like, oh, dying for sure. And it was because I. I don't think the human mind can wrap its head around. I can't wrap it around me not being anything and just not, you're not existent anymore. There's no thought. You're not there. It's like you living life because to yourself, you're your world. You know, you can't think of it without you being in it because you're there. But once you have a kid, 
once you bring a life into that, like I'm cool with dying now. If I go and you properly go bonded with the child, that's yes. super important. Yeah, my yeah. son is like my best friend. Yeah. Like he's, I, I know you're not. Well, when he's older, I'm not going to be his best friend. But right, right. now, we're we're bros. <laughs> but we're buddies, man. Like whenever I leave the room, he'll get pissed and start crying and saying "dad, dad" and throwing a fit on the floor. And in my head, I'm like, "Damn it, why is he screaming?" But then also, I'm like, "Oh man, this is kind of cool." And then I'll open the door, like, "Come on, I'm gonna change or I'm gonna take a piss." Like, "Come on in." Like, there's no, there's like an open door policy with the bathroom here, <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> "All right," he'll like jump in the bathtub while I'm going to the bathroom pissing or whatever, and he'll just kind of play with his to his toys in the, the dry tub, and I'm just hanging out whatever brushing my teeth and he'll like want to brush his teeth with me i'm like okay cool and i pretend to give him mouthwash and i just fill the thing up with water and he like gargles with me it's you know i'm happy you can get away and, and that's fine at his age like you can get away with that stuff yeah man. but i mean if you were to ask me what my biggest fear is now it's like well something happening to my wife or my son like there's nothing you know my wife watches a lot of id channel stuff and she'll watch some that are very fucked up, like their kids getting raped and murdered. I'm just like, man, I'm not like a violent person, but if I was to find out anything were to happen to my son or my wife, like I would go to prison probably. In yeah. Texas, I don't think I would. I would probably be justified, probably. We're a pretty uh, understanding state when it comes to shit like that, but yeah. Yeah, I'm cool with dying. If nothing happens, nothing happens. I'll sleep. Let That's me cool. fucking stab you in the neck then. <laughs> hey, hey, jump through, video drone me and jump through the fucking the computer here and ah! <laughs> Damn it. I was listening to I'm, some I'm of your... worth more dead than alive, so. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to some of your SoundCloud stuff. Well, no, I mean, I guess I was looking at it and I was like, oh man, he goes like way back. But I, I haven't listened to the SoundCloud stuff yet. I was listening to your first episode on Spotify, and I think it was your brother that you yes, were interviewing. Ronaldo and I. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and you guys were talking about growing up, and the Jean Claude Van Damme stuff came up, and you know it was cool. Yeah. I, I I liked listening to it, and uh, and I I thought to myself, fuck, I lost my train of thought. I knew it was gonna happen. Uh, we were talking Whoa, about oh, oh oh it was about your attitude dude because earlier you know like we're talking about i think those soundcloud days and it, you you mentioned that you were like uh just wild or whatever and i remember hearing that in that first episode i was like oh fucking raymond's got like some fucking spice to him right because <laughs> you guys were just being kind of like brutal i was like oh he's just being nice with me i was like okay well i need to relax with him too and i was like i just need to like fucking slap him around a little bit like drop a few more f-bombs yeah because you, you have Dude. you do seem like you mellowed down a little bit i i i'm I'm a lot more mellow now than I was when I was in my late teens and 20s. I was very much so a regular cocaine using drinker. I was always on I was always on drugs. It's for some sort of drug always, not pot, like a pill, some Xanax, some Vicodin, Oxy, drinking, you know, that's what my MO was for a lot of years. And Ronaldo was there, my older brother, he saw me do things and i broke a window one time when at our apartment and i just i was very much so i was i i partied man i would do it i would do coke and drink for days man when i was out of town working for like you know five six days straight just staying awake being stupid you know and Ronaldo, he would always, he was always there. My brother, Ronaldo, he's like my best friend. Well, my, one of my best friends, but he's, him and I have been there for each other. We've both gone through a lot of shit just with life in general. And he's always been my boy. Like I can call him at any time. He's there for me, you know, shit. We had floating $200 that we would lend each other for years, but he yeah, has, him and like, I, I listen to a lot of like trader education, like financial investment education and stuff like that and there's like investors in that world you know and those are like the old stuffy guys that are working on like mutual funds or like making sure their iras are on top you know and then there's traders and those are like the younger guys a little bit edgier you know some of them sell education on how to you know analyze stocks and the stock market and stuff like that so and those guys the traders right 
you, you know, you think of the typical Wall Street idea of a trader. You think of like Gordon Gecko and, you know, Charlie Sheen and Wall Street or like some stuffy suit, you know, that grew up in the Hamptons, like that kind of guy, right? But yeah. they're actually, they look like you and me. You know, they sit in front of a laptop most of the day doing their job. But some of them have education and they have this, they have this kind of like um, calm, you know, collected monotone voice and occasionally they drop a fucking f-bomb because something's so fucking stupid yeah. right and and and, <laughs> and that is what i heard in your brother you know in that first episode i was like oh he sounds like a traitor he sounds like one of these guys which is cool yeah. you know <laughs> yeah he's like uh dicaprio at the beginning of wolf of wall street right he's a little nuts but he's not there completely. right yeah he's a little cool <laughs> calm collected with some sarcasm yeah that's what that's what i heard out of him like oh, that's yeah cool. well i had to give him shit because at first he was just kind of like yes no i was like are you gonna fucking do this the whole podcast and he was just like no i've never oh, oh, oh. i just had to i have to kind of bust his balls like dude it's like we're not gonna do this if you're just gonna like okay yes so that was no. him loose yeah well loose ish it was <laughs> you know he at the time he was going through a lot of personal things and uh, okay he I think wasn't. he mentioned some of that, you know, and he was, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I don't, I don't talk about his business because I know about it, but I, I'm not, I'm not putting his business out there, but yeah, he was going through a really rough time at that point. And I was going through a rough time, you know, probably six months, five, four to six months prior to that. And he was there for me in a big way that, you know, he was a, he was a big brother. We always joke around like my little big brother, cause I've always been bigger than him and I've always been like more chaotic and kind of in my own world but he he shows up as my big brother when he has to yeah not has to but you know but we're also we're also dramatic people we come from a dramatic family so we wait till it gets to the like the bottom of the barrel craziness and then we reach out to one another <laughs> so it's like zero to three hundred and like five seconds kind of but i bet us. like those like more stressful moments build bonds right like it's yeah for sure like yeah he I want to get him back on the podcast. I think he, we were supposed to do like a VHS podcast because, man, this motherfucker's got a collection. Whew, it's nuts. But we were supposed to do one. But, man, we're so he's got two daughters. You know, I have a, my son and my wife and I, I have more time, you know, but dude, 18 I'm, years old will be here before you know it, dude. Dude, we're talking about how he's going to be three, man. In June, I was like, holy shit. I was like, I remember when we were in the NICU. <laughs> it's like with him. It's like, that's crazy. <sighs> Dude, are you ever afraid of that creature behind you? What? Behind you to Pee the right. Peewee? Is that Peewee? Pee yeah. Oh, hold on. Yeah. I have two peewees. Oh, dude. <laughs> with, with, at that angle, like it was making his face completely white and he looked like a, like a, like a horror puppet. Oh. Kind of looks like a horror puppet right there. <laughs> yeah. This one's actually kind of cool. It's a, uh, it's like a ventriloquist peewee. Let me see. Holy shit, dude. That this is thing's scary huge. as shit, dude. You just gotta black out his eyes, dude. Fucking, <laughs> fucking make Look. it black. No, what, dude. Did you, yeah, his mouth moves. It's like a little... Do they have silicone <laughs> inserts or what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me see if he has a dick. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, I got this from a VHS trade or something. I got this. It's got the... I have the original box, too, but... Holy shit. I keep, we keep all these things we don't want our son to mess with in this we, this is the office this is really my wife's school room uh -huh. I guess or technically it's mine too because I'm working on getting my my high school diploma I know I'm 84 getting my high school diploma <laughs> but well hey man yeah. hey, you got your GED at some point no I'm, I'm working on getting my high school diploma right now well, it's I mean, not a, dude, look, I, look at how many like entrepreneurs and billionaires never finished high school. Like that's just shit well, my, just happens, dude. Yeah. My dad's like a high up person who works. He works at Bill Miller's. He doesn't have a high school diploma. He's 50. You mentioned he was like high up in corporate or something. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, he's a director of operations for the bakery. Okay. So he's, he's like the head shit down there, downtown. Is, is, uh, is Bill Miller's, is that a Texas thing or a San Antonio thing? 
Or um, I guess they started out in San Antonio, but they have they have stores all over. Yeah, Texas. I, I thought I thought I saw some out there. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of people came down on uh, Bill Miller's, I guess, when the election started, because um, one of one of the Millers, he's like uh, one of the higher ups, Bay- Bayless Miller. He um, he's a Trump supporter and he mm-hmm. like donated the most amount anybody can you know, give to a political party. And all these people were like, oh, cancel Bill Miller's, you know. I was like, are you going to cancel family members because they're conservatives? Because right. they're, you know, if you're a Democrat, you're a Democrat. You're going to vote for whoever's a Democrat because we have a two-party system. Right. If you're a Republican, you're going to, I give, I gave, I gave money to fucking, to Hillary Clinton. I gave money to Bernie. You know, I gave money, a little bit of money to Biden. And then I cut it off. I had to change my fucking card just to stop the DNC from taking money out of my account every month. But it was an auto it. thing. Yeah I, yeah, I didn't even select it. And they were taking like it was like 50 bucks a month. I was like, what is this shit? <laughs> so I finally figured out how to stop it. I had to cancel my card. Damn, that sucks that you had to cancel You're your get freaking mad at card somebody for that. To, to do yeah, that, you would think I that call- they would give you a function. Yeah. There's nobody to call to do that for you. You can't. I was. I tried for like two months. I tried, and then finally, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna cancel the card. Have a new one sent to the house. But I don't know why I got into that. It's just money. But <laughs> well, because yeah. of the politics, yeah. And yeah, Bill Miller's. Well, my yeah. dad's worked for Bill Miller since my mom was pregnant with me, and I remember being a young kid, and that was the only thing we would eat sometimes. And in my head, I was like, man, this is awesome. We get to eat Bill Miller ribs, fried chicken, brisket, turkey, like as a kid. And then I'm thinking back now, I'm like, oh, that's all we could afford was free food. <laughs> so it's like so Bill Miller's fed me for a long time. So and they've been very good to my father, you know, because he they brought him in as like assistant manager and he worked his way up and he's makes a very good living there. They bust your ass. But I mean, you know. That's like canceling your uncle because he's a Trump supporter. Like, oh, I'm never going to speak to him again. He's racist. Like, well, what I, about I all the things he like did for you? I always thought like all the workers there are like really professional. It's like the it's like the Mexican Chick Fil A, right? Like they're yes. all like like prim and proper. They're sure to press. Like they, like they must not allow them to come in looking like shit. No, it's professional. It's like the Yankees. You know, the Yankees they have to have their shirts tucked in. They have right. to have a certain. Yeah, it's cuts. all it's almost like they're all fitted like they've all been fitted for a shirt. It's weird. Yeah, and you know That's just if you want to work there. You have to be a clean cut They finally did away with the visible tattoos rule where really yeah Because before if you had visible tattoos you couldn't work there now they're chill with it but yeah. So my thing with Bill Miller's is like man You're gonna vote for who you're gonna vote for I grew up eating it, you know, still eat it. We had it for dinner, you know, <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, I shouldn't be eating it because it's not good. It's not very healthy, but. Oh, I thought you were talking about the politics. You're still talking about Bill Miller's. Oh, fuck no. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> People, hey, man, chop barbecue, son. Dude. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's delicious, man. Fucking brisket. I love Bill Miller's, man, but shit. What did we talk about? Jesus. We're just going off on tangents. It's fine. I don't mind. Yeah. Um, My you, head. I have a. I'm like. I'm writing down like little things. I'm like. Oh, I don't want to forget about that. I'll bring that up later. So Dude, we're we're good yeah. for a couple more hours, man. Man, what time is it? Shit. It's fucking. It's 10:45. only 10:45. <laughs> you gotta so go. Tired. Well, no, I don't have to go. You know I'm... what? I, I, I'll let I'll let you go here in a bit, but. Uh, we have to talk about ghost stories in San Antonio because like, okay. It's funny. My mother-in-law just brought this up today. It's funny you fucking say this because they closed down the tracks, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so like I brought this up like a week ago, you know, and remember I said I was having issues every time I add a piece of technology, something else breaks. Right. And so I had this dude here in San Antonio. He's like, uh, like uh like a neighborhood reporter for the west side but he does everything on social media it's called various with values and i had him on we recorded it i have the data but there's like a lot of echo on the mic and uh like i had a bunch of technical issues and so i have some parts that are gonna fix that i just have to set them up 
But anyway, we talked about this and I was like, so I kind of feel like I'm betraying him, but I think we're going to have more to talk about because he wants to go out, like buy the tracks, buy us by the park, the Alamo and like do his little fucking show out and about. And I think Wait, that's he wants to buy a spot. No, he wants to head out to like all the haunted spots in San Antonio. Oh. And yeah, because he does on site reporting. So and I had it, dude, it's going to be a good once I get it squared away. It's going to be a really good episode. But uh, yeah, dude, you're trying, like, to, you're trying to figure out how to record on the go. No, no, no. He does. Oh, like he does. Like that's his thing. But uh, but he's going to like go and do that with uh haunted places in san antonio that would be sick dude yeah dude and so like i think we're gonna have more to expect from from him and i'll forward you that stuff but but yeah we Hell should yeah. talk about That's... san antonio because san antonio's got a lot of fucked up haunted places dude i know the tracks for sure you put the baby powder on the railroad tracks that the ghost of the dead children push you across your car across the tracks. yeah but that's gone apparently i haven't been since i was like fucking 14 but yeah yeah i the last time i went i was in my early 20s and it was with uh um i think it was my cousin ricardo um our roommate juan tapia you know him. Hmm. Um, by reputation. Well, by proxy. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Christine was there because we were all roommates at the time. I just remember I was very inebriated. <laughs> and I I just remember like, did we move? And they're like, we haven't even gotten there yet. And I was like, what? Oh, yeah. They're like, we're still because there's a little bit of a drive like back roads, I think. And I just remember it felt like we were being pushed. But it's one of those things like with the Ouija board. Did you ever play the Ouija board? Right, yeah. I I was the one who pushed the Ouija board every time I played. You were, I did you not... son of a bitch. Oh, yeah. I, uh, did I didn't need any I've seen the Exorcist too many times. I don't want to open those doors. So I was so always the one to like... In order to like prevent like the actual communication from yeah. possibly taking place? Oh, yes, what sir. a pain in the ass, dude. You know what? Like, I'm a pig. My my mother was obsessed with convincing me that the Ouija board was bullshit, right? <laughs> and so and so she was like, and I, and I knew that it was real. I was like, man, I know if we do it, it'll work. I was like, I just haven't had anybody to you know play with. And she was like, all right, go get it. But we're gonna conduct a scientific experiment, right? You know, we're not gonna like I'm gonna swear to you, and we had trust on our side. You know that whole thing. And it was like, she's like, I swear to you, I won't manipulate it if you don't manipulate it. And so we agreed, and it, the fucking planchette just sat there. It just sat there. And didn't move? Didn't move. Because I wanted to know. I wanted to know. And my mother promised me, and so I waited, and nothing happened. The person who's holding the matches, you know, when you have to light a match, you know, who, who picks the, the lit match is the one that has to do the thing. Uh-huh. The person holding the matches knows which one's burnt. So they're the ones that have the loaded the loaded matches. There's always one. I don't uh, I, I that's what I tell myself because yeah. That's we should do that yeah. one day <laughs> when all this covid shit's over. We do? When uh I fuck yeah, do it. I'm all right. down. Uh, actually Frank's wife, Mary, she read me my tarot cards one time. And everybody else is like, no, no, no. And I was like, I'll do it. I don't give a fuck. Like, I was like, I'm down. I would. That's when I was in my my wild phase when I would come to everything drunk or loaded. So I was like, yeah, let's do it. I have tons of occult shit here. I have a shelf right there. And it's got it's got like my mask from Neurocam. Remember I told you about like that organization, but I got like an alien mask. I got like weird paintings, uh, like a personal grimoire, occult books, crystals, Fucking, so I have you, a planchette. I have a Ouija planchette. I have a bunch of shit up there. So are you into the occult or are you just something that interests you? Uh, a little bit of both. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm into it. It interests me. It's not like my religion. You know, I don't, I joke that I'm a brujo, but like, I'm just in, interested in occult. Yeah. If anything, like along like the brujo, santeria, like lines, I, 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 th I think what my grandmother was doing was apprenticing me with herbs, right? She was kind of a yerbera, right? She's, she knew what plants were good for what. And she taught me all that stuff growing up. So you could say, like, I'm an apprentice yerbero, which is, just means uh, 
how would you say it like an like an herb doctor or you know medicine yeah. doctor yeah so but, yeah yeah that like that stuff never scared me as a kid even as a church going kid when i was like very into all those christian values well christian values ditto I, that's that's kind of pushing it cuz if you think about christian values they're just values. You don't have to be a Christian to hold those values. But when I was very into like being afraid to go to hell and all those things, people reading tarot, I was always interested in a psychic. Like I was like, I want to go to a psychic. That would be cool. Like, you know, it sounds like you were interested in the spiritual technology. You did, didn't pick a side. I, my thing is like, I am a very curious person. I am a proof person. That's why I would never call myself an atheist or even agnostic. Right, because there's I'm no just, way to rule it out either. Yeah, there, there's there's no way to say that there is no God or there is a God. For all I know, I'm a blasphemer and I'm going to hell. Fuck, you know, I'll be down there with some friends. But <laughs> my thing is like, I was never scared to like, oh, well, I read parts of the Satanic Bible and it's a glorified book of atheism. Honestly, that's all the 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 book, the Satanic I have Satanic it too. Bible. I have it over there. Yeah. yeah I'm like praying my, my, my Christian mother-in-law that's like over doesn't find it. I, I, I have it wrapped up like in a sheet of paper so that if she <laughs> just pulled it off of the bookcase, it would just be like a white cover. But yeah, it's, a, it's the Satanic Bible. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, a, it's also... an interesting read. Have you ever read the Satanic Rituals? That's almost incomprehensible. Uh, No. It's like I, it, it's by Anton uh, Lavey. Anton it's, Lavey. It looks yeah. exactly the same thing, except instead of Bible, it says rituals, and it's like incomprehensible nonsense. But there's actually two satanic churches. There's the Satanic Church by you know Anton Sandor Lavey, and then there's uh, uh, the Temple of Set. And the guy that started the Temple of Set, like he basically took all the sex out of Anton Sandor Levey's Satanism, and like there's just a bunch of math and shit left. Well, Anton Levey was very weird person. He was like, I don't know. He he was like a uh, he was married to a woman, but he was like a power bottom when he performed <laughs> sex acts with men. I was just like, what? I mean, God bless, <coughs> whatever. But my thing is just. I don't know. With all like pieces of piece, books that you have to like the Bible to Christians and, you know, who believe in Christianity, that's like the word of God and God. And in order to believe in God, you have to believe in his word. So that's like, you know, that's straightforward. That's a book you believe in. But reading the Bible now when I was kind of going through this little spiritual fucking crisis, whatever you want to call it, I talked to um, a Christian pastor that I used that I grew up kind of grew up partially with. And he started telling me to read certain scriptures and he gave me a bunch of Bibles and, you know, I was reading them and I was like this. this yeah, but you wanted right. him to reason with you. You well, wanted him one, to give you like a good reason, right? Yeah. And I, yeah. And I went into it very open minded. I was just like, okay, like, at that time, I was like, I think I'm just angry at God. And then I was like, maybe if I hear the word from like an actual pastor who I trust, trusted, trust, he's a good guy, you know. But the first few things he said, I was just like, okay, it's not the end times. And he started telling me that it was the end times. And I was like, dude, I was like, well, what does it matter if it's the end times and Jesus comes back and he he um, raptures all of us? If I just make it through the end times after the rapture, I'll go to heaven. He was like, oh, wow. You, so, you know, the Bible's like, yeah, dude, I've been going to that church. I went to that church longer than you, man. <laughs> like I went there since I'm a kid. So it wasn't jiving with me. I was just like, OK, I've heard this before. I was I was going into it thinking, oh, I'm going to feel something different. I'm going to feel something that I think is missing from my life. And I don't feel like there's something missing in my life anymore. I think I just kind of came to the realization, like, when we de death is a mystery. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you believe. We, at the end of the day, nobody knows exactly what happens when you die, you know. And it's kind of, to me, it's a beautiful mystery now because I'm not afraid anymore to, not only am I not afraid to die, but I'm not afraid of what's going to happen after I die because, you know, if... I would like to believe you get reincarnated 
into the same person you are, but it's just in a different lifetime. That's what I, in my head, I'm like, that sounds, that sounds a little right. I don't know, <laughs> but cause it's crazy. We're here now on earth. We're on a spinning fucking rock, you know, with people, politics. It's just, it's a little freaky if you think about it now. You know what I think about when I think about like uh, the what happens when we die question is, you know, let's say that nothing happens. Let's say it's the end, right? That I think that's extremely hard for some people to accept, right? It's like, but how yeah. can there be nothing? You know, there's got to be something after, you know, we die. But if you think about it, we've been dead before. Yeah, before and, you were born, right, what was going on? Right, and you yeah. you tr you go back and you try to remember, and there's just nothing there. There's just nothing there. You know, when you hit the rewind button, you go back. It was like five years ago, ten years ago, fifteen years ago. You know, thirty five years ago, and you get to that point, you're like, I don't remember anything. That was my most distant memory. And then you know, you could at that point, you could just fucking push the dial all the way to the negatives, and there's nothing there. You know? Yeah, exactly. And I think I think as a people, why it's hard, even for me sometimes, I still, still, it still freaks me out a little bit, but it's like, we're very selfish. That's why everything has to be about us all the time. So no way I'm just going to die and nothing's going to happen. I'm going to go to a better right. place than this. It's a like that, uh, that. It's denial. It's denial. Yeah. Yeah. So, man, like this is like fucking dark shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I don't care. I'm a very dark person. So yeah, I like I, I know, but I'm just that. Like me too. Like I don't. I like I could talk about this shit all day, but I could just see somebody out there who's particularly squeamish, and they're like, "Oh, this no, no, I can't listen to this." You know, and they just walk but away. I mean, I was I was raised, I was raised very like Christian, but I was also raised to have an open mind and I was not raised by judgmental people. And that's the one thing I give my parents credit for. Cause when we were young, my dad, even was like though they were Christian. setting up a conflict at the same time, at the, yeah. they were, they were educating you, but even, even despite that, there was a conflict building and you know, here we are facing it. Yeah. I mean, they gave you the complex <laughs> of, Oh, it's okay to believe what you want to believe, to love who you want to love type thing, but you're going to go to hell if you do this. Right, or it's make the like, right decisions. There's always yeah. that that fear of hell, I think, is a curse to put on somebody. Like, you know, my I'm not saying, if my son wants to go to church and get saved and do all those things, of course, I'll do it. You know, that, but I'm not going to be raising my son like, oh, don't lie, you're going to hell. Like, why you know what you my mom that? told me one time she said uh she said me being the imperfect and fallible human that i am i love you so much that i would uh sacrifice my immortal soul burn for eternity in the, in, in in an ocean of fire to make sure that you were safe that you were okay if yeah. me being the person that I am and being capable of that level of love, what makes you think that a, you know, a perfect God is going to put you through that? You know what I mean? That like a, a perfect lo a God who's capable of perfect love. How would they condemn you to hell? It doesn't make any sense. And that was that. That was when she gave me her atheist or agnostic argument. It's like. Oh, your mom? Uh huh. Yeah, oh, and wow. and yeah. I, I followed a couple of years after that. Dude. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, that's man. I, my parents are very devout. You know, I would never disrespect my parents' beliefs or question. You know, I have friends that are like, "Oh, you pray? What are you talking?" You know, it's you know, praying is meditative. You know, it calms people down. You know, because. Maybe I don't believe you're talking to somebody, but maybe just that's meditation. You're clearing your fucking head. You know, you're 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 taking in breathing. Yeah. You know, it's it's all very, you know, it's it's touchy subjects, but it shouldn't be touchy subjects. We're curious people. We're animals. We're very curious. You know, we're going to question everything. And if you're not questioning anything, then you don't have a personality. <laughs> it's like 
Yeah, some of those people that they're just not curious or, you know, they're not spiritual. They're very uh, monolithic, you know. They, they don't have a lot of dimensions to their personality. It's like, oh, what are you reading? What are you listening to? You know, what kind of art do you like? What kind of, you know, it's like there, there are some people that are just so colorful and multidimensional. And then you meet these other people that it's just like, what's on the game you know i'm gonna pick up a six pack on the way home and then that's it and then they die and i just can never live like that man i, I don't i don't know if i have that in my dna to i i wish i wish i had the faith of my mother i wish i had that i wish i could believe in that and maybe i will down the line maybe i'll be a, a born again 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 christian or something <laughs> like technically i'm going to heaven because i was baptized so i'm good is that but i yeah i'm i'm there with you i'm well that just takes care of original sin you still have uh you still have like you know you got to make sure that you make it to confession before you uh <laughs> oh i'm not catholic sir oh no 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 i'm not catholic <laughs> semantics I just, semantics i just have to i just have to ask god to forgive me before i go to bed say the prayer and then i won't go to hell so. i love playing these what if games in middle school where i was like what if you got hit by a truck on the way to school and you just finished like banging it out with like some hot chick <laughs> <laughs> that goes to the suicide question right christians have a very hard time with suicide because it's like okay so you have to be forgiven of all your sins before you die to go to heaven right because all sin is the same in the eyes of god it's in the scripture right so right. if i rape and murder somebody I ask God for forgiveness and I get put to death, I'll be in heaven, right? Right. According to the book. Right. So if I if I say fuck or god damn it and somebody shoots me in the head, God's going to be like I'm going to be next to Jeffrey Dahmer like, "Hey man, that's so why you are, I admire the Jews so much because the Christians have a fucking an easy out. They have a get out of jail free card. But yeah. Jews don't. Like no. they're dealing with the Aldabot, they're dealing with the old God, you know, the shit's going to get fucked old up. Testament, man. Yeah. yeah. But Jews are the chosen people, man, for sure. I'm just, yeah, the whole, <laughs> they are, they're chosen people. It's in the Bible, the old Testament, but ah, man, all the, all the Bible talk and that, people always ask, why are all your on call podcast shirts, like religion based? Like, well, I don't know what is. What is the bulk of conversations had on these podcasts? <laughs> it's like death, you know, what happens kind of. It seems like you're like, it does kind of seem like you're a little fixated on it, but like not in a bad way. It's just, you know, it's a fascination. Yeah. I get that. Hey, go get, yeah. me, go, I, go get me some water. Sorry, I'm talking to my daughter. She was trying to sneak in here. <laughs> your daughter's awake right now? Yeah, you're you're not even go get me water. <laughs> what dude? Uh, what time? What time? Yeah, she's not even supposed to be up right now. I don't know what the hell is going on. <laughs> but if while she's up, get you but, some water. Yeah, yeah. but give, but give me a water. <laughs> then go go to bed. <laughs> um, yeah, I I try, man. I try to make it a point to not like my whole goal was like I'm gonna do these God podcasts so I don't talk about politics. I've lost a lot of I've lost a lot of listeners because of all the things that I talk about, like religion wise. That's why I was like, I'm going to do these God episodes and then I won't talk about it at all Come here. on here. Come here. Say hi to Raymond. Say hi. Hello. <laughs> all, right. all right, go to bed. <laughs> How old is your daughter? Nine. Nine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Dang. Have you taught her to mow the grass yet? No, dude, it's too heavy for her. I have a push mower. <laughs> oh, yeah. So do we, but yeah. But yeah. I, that's why, I, like I was saying, but it just, I don't know how it's some, and I don't even know if I'm the one who brings it up. I'm not going to listen to any of these, so. <laughs> you, you still don't? Like, like I, um, when did uh, that stop? I lis I stopped listening Actually, I take that back. I just lied. I listened to the one you and I did. I listened to the one my friend Josh Frazier and I did. Honestly, in my head, if I think about, if I start thinking about the conversation for more than five minutes, I was like, what did we, t and I'll listen to the whole thing. I'll be like, oh, wow. I can kind of see past my, my voice. Because I don't think anybody <clears throat> likes the sound of their own voice.
Yeah, it's weird. It's weird Unless to you're hear Michael your Jackson. own voice. Yeah. But I guess he could fall in love with your own voice, kind of a narcissistic thing. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I sometimes if I hear like especially these Skype ones, if I hear like a lot of uh a lot of pausing or a lot of like the sound in my I can like there's been a couple times on here where I've heard where the sound like you were talking and you weren't talking. Mm -hmm. I was like, "Oh, I'm going to have to listen back and make sure that the audio is actually good." It might be my noise gate. Like, I think my no. noise gate might be sensitive. I have a noise gate and it ducks out, like, at a certain volume. Oh, that makes sense. Man, what, what, okay, fuck talking about religion. What do you <laughs> have, what do you, do you have your laptop or what are you using? Uh, dude, uh, like, I have, a like, a, a double monitor computer. I have two cameras, two of these mics. One of them is a different brand, though. Uh, I have like a uh, internal sound card, external sound card. I have a uh, fucking Google in here. I got fucking, I just have a bunch you of shit your, in here. You have your setup in there. Yeah. That's and then I have the acoustic paneling. So, I know uh, I keep, I have had those acoustic paneling since before I started the podcast in my Amazon wish list. I need to buy them. I just want to cover this wall and then this back wall over here. I just want to kind of cover those kind of I, I want to double that so like you see like the square right here or whatever so like it'll mm -hmm. have one in the middle one on the top and two on either side so in my head it's like if we ever buy because we're renting right now once we buy a house I want to well if we don't have any more kids I want to have a room just for my make sure that plug podcast. game is strong dude <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, it's uh, it's very strong. I'll just say that. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> I swallow my own semen. That's oh! what I do. <laughs> oh, we oh! just. <laughs> Holy I, shit! You know, you gotta, you gotta give yourself a gift sometimes. <laughs> I, I, I heard it tastes bad. Uh, it's a little salty. You know, a asking well, for the a smoker friend. was more salty. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I but I want I always picture like I want to soundproof the entire room. Like I don't want an inch of unless it's, you know, all the sound paneling. It sounds it sounds good, man. Yeah, it's honestly it's the microphones. I I still haven't been able to to do the settings from the videos that you've sent me. Oh, uh yeah, I think it was the first video I sent you is the one I ended up using. I looked at that I looked at that one with it's cuz that one's with the software. Because, dude, I can't get that software to work. OBS? I why? What? Oh, uh, why? Uh, OBS, you mean? Why? Yeah, it, it keeps asking me, like, to name my operating system. Are you no on matter a Mac? What I... I'm sorry? Are you on a Mac? No, I have a, huh. a HP tower. Weird. Is it? Oh. It's a Windows 7, whatever the newest Windows is. Yeah. 10 or whatever uh, yeah. yeah i didn't my laptop my wife my wife has the laptop now for school and she has it all set up and i you know i cleaned it off for her so she can just use it and she has a monitor as well because sometimes the screen fucks up on that laptop so she has her set up like right across the table for me we have like two table we have a desk and then i have a table for my stuff mm. so she kind of does her thing and you know when i'm not wrestling my son I'll come in here and check on uh, editing stuff and making sure, you know. You have any uh, any cool interviews coming up? Um, um, I'm supposed to do one. Uh, I was supposed to do one with Millie Mars, but that San Antonio rapper. Have you heard him? Mm -mm. He's a San Antonio rapper. Um, I haven't heard any a lot of his new stuff, but. He had some kind of case against him. What? Uh, yeah, you can look it up. I won't talk about it because I don't. It's I don't know if it got thrown out or what. But I was <clears> supposed, <throat> I've been wanting to do one with him for a long time, and then I looked up his case, and I I won't be able to do it just because of what, what even if what's he, involved. Yeah. Oh yeah, he he was uh, allegedly. Um, it had something to do with him raping a girl. Yeah. So, I, like I said, I don't know if he was found <clears throat> not guilty or what happened, but 
every time I try to do an interview with him, he's like, oh, let me change it. Let me let me move it to a different day or let, let's wait a couple weeks so I can we can promote it. And and then I don't hear from him for like several months. So but uh, once I saw that, I was like, oh, yeah, I can't, yeah, I can't. you got to pull out, uh, man. I can't do it, even even though it hasn't ever happened. But, you know, I don't like I don't think he said this, but, you know, I'm winking. He might have. Um, anybody who wants to take the podcast from me and edit it and give it back to me, I'm not doing that. I, and I'm not even saying a lot of people are going to listen to it, but it's, I'm, why am I going to let you edit my podcast? You know, it's ridiculous or tell me what I can or can't say. Have there been know, people that have come up to you and they're like, Hey man, let's collab. Let me mix for you or shit like that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I had somebody, I didn't do a podcast because I was told to submit questions and I said no. And then I was told to submit questions, if I didn't submit questions that they wanted to edit the podcast and, uh, or they wanted to give me, I'm sorry, they wanted to give me notes on how to edit the podcast. And I, anybody I have a podcast with, like with you, I don't have to say anything because, you know, I don't edit the podcast. Whatever right. you hear, whatever we're doing, that's what's going to be posted. Yeah. You know? yeah. I'm, I may take out a little bit of the beginning and maybe a little bit at the end if there's like rambling, but I don't, I usually don't edit because I don't see the point. Yeah. Well, and it, it's a little, somebody dis says like, it's disingenuous. I said my daughter's name. I, yeah. 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 But like if somebody says like, oh, I didn't want to say my kid's name or something I'm like, oh yeah, I'll take that out. That to me, that's like, okay, you, if it comes to your kids, then I'm like, all right, I respect that. But if it's like, oh, I didn't sound professional or, oh, I didn't, you know, I should have said this and can we re-record it? I've gotten that too. I was like, no, <laughs> it's like, no, I'm just not a big fan of that. But then again, I haven't really, other than a lot of friends, I've only interviewed a few people outside of my actually have quite a bit more than outside the circle but i just sent you a text and it's oh. uh it's uh listening homework these guys are from san antonio and did you do it through skype or on my phone it, oh there I, it is text message yeah and uh, oh, yeah. so these guys are from San Antonio. They're really good. Like the top five songs are pretty good, but there's a, another album. I think it was released 2008 called Angelus. And uh, just check them out because they're from San Antonio. I'm going to try and get them in here once oh, I got nice. Yeah. And so, uh, but they're really yeah. cool guys. Uh, they're spiritual, thoughtful, you know, people. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Man, I want to, I want to interview more people that I don't know at all, or I haven't really heard. Cause those are like always my favorite podcasts to listen to. It's like, Oh man, these people have never met. They've never talked before. And that's kind of how our first podcast went a little bit, even though we were texting, but just kind of branching out a little bit. Yeah. My wife and I are going to record one tomorrow. God willing. You'd like so. just the two of y'all or. That's usually the way we were doing it for a while. I heard it was a couple just like wife. that, yeah. Yeah, just my wife and I, but man, with our kiddo, whenever we have time with just us two, it's like, I'm always like, you want to record? Like, okay. Or you, <laughs> it's or, like, let's make a little list. And it's like, and we make the list and it's like, I'm tired. Like, let's go to sleep. Like, all right. There's, I don't know. I guess when you're parent, co-parenting together, it's like, when you have free time. You just like, want to, you, wanna... you just want to fucking cuddle, dude. Oh, Yeah. I'm a big, I'm a cuddle bear myself, but nah, I cuddle. You know what? I do cuddle. I do cuddle. Are, 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 you, are you, are you the spoon or are you the spoonie? I'm the, I'm the little spoon. The little spoon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which is probably selfish. That means I'm a selfish lover, right? Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'll just, I'll put my back to you. You just, you know, you try to get, you know, you try to connect, you know, as me being the small spoon. So. Yeah, you're the cake. <laughs> you're not the spoon. You're the cake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like to think of myself as the frosting. but The frosting. You know. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> no, but we cuddle, but we always we always start cuddling or we'll do the face to face cuddle, but we always get hot and it's like, okay, we're good. Like We got some intimacy in. We're you got to get you got to get that fan in the room, dude. Oh, we have the ceiling fan. I'm a hot son of a bitch, dude. I'm very, I run hot all the time. Even yeah. if we're in this house, the temperature is set at like 72 and I'm like still hot, I'm sweating all the time. 
I think it's the the the, the years of cocaine use. Does your uh, does your body like metabolize sugar at a different speed or something like that because of the coke? Oh, because did you say because of the COVID? No, because of the coke. <laughs> no, dude, not the sugary coke. I'm talking about, like, did it did it fuck with your body at yeah, all? I think like, so. I think it did because uh, no, I was just laughing that she said that. It's just I never thought I would hear those words put in the same sentence. What did I say? I, it just sounds funny. <laughs> It's like, do you sweat? We pretty much asked me, do you sweat a lot because you did a lot of coke? It's like, I think yes. <laughs> I think I, I think I do. I think it's just a lot of drug use, just makes me a sweaty bastard. I feel like Tony Soprano all the time. <sighs> R.I.P. That's boss, dude. It's like that old uh, uh, ghetto boy song. It's like uh, gang gangsta ass niggas uh, can't run for shit because gangsta ass niggas can't run fast or something. Like that. <laughs> Oh yeah, man. Shit. What are you listening to right now? This I saw you sent me that link. Is there anything new that's out that you're into? Oh, uh, uh I've just been listening to like a lot of lo-fi, uh vaporwave, synthwave, which are all like subgenres of electronic music. Send me some, man. I'm I'm like stuck listening to James Brown and the and the Almond Brothers and songs that my son likes from movies he likes so like the synthwave thing is like 80s meets future you know yeah. and, th and then there's like dark wave which is like synthwave but it's associated with like blade runner and terminator and you know that kind of shit oh i like that shit dude dark, yeah that's dark wave and then vapor wave is kind of like the same thing but instead of like 80s meets future it's 90s meets future and you got oh. a lot of like uh for some reason there's like the statue of david is like the logo for vaporwave the, the statue of david yeah yeah like david's bust oh. you know that 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 greek looking you know white clay bust of oh david. yes yeah yeah you know, the guy with his balls chopped off or whatever yeah <laughs> yeah and uh and so so yeah like that's the logo of vaporwave it's like a futuristic oh, okay. past yeah i listen I, I i've bought a number of albums on um band camp and my son and i were playing outside or we were playing i was playing with my son outside i was like you know what i'm gonna listen to these albums i bought on band camp and they were good this is very i don't even know what the genre is i guess it's like a lot of uh patterns a lot of moog not moog, moog but like electronic sounding things like my boy chris king's band symbol i listened to like three of their out or his albums and then i listened to um oh, there's another guy that i bought one of his albums I, i'm not gonna lie i bought his album because it's i thought i read something but i, I apparently i was very tired that you can get a free shirt and the shirt was dope but it turns out it wasn't a shirt it was like a discount on a shirt and I was like, damn it. So I bought the album for that. And then I, I listened to the album. I was like, wow, this is actually pretty good. But it's all, there's no like lyrics or words. It's just all Have you ever notes. done the vinyl thing? I have vinyl. Yeah. I, you have, I a, used you to have, have a record a, player? Yeah. It's right over here. I have a lot of vinyl. I used to have a lot more. I have a lot of prints. I have some Richard Pryor records. Richard I have, Pryor. Um, yeah. You know what? Let me grab some. Hold on. I'll be right back. All right. I'll, I'll take over. So, uh, Raymond's gonna go and get some fucking vinyls because I asked him about it. So, I don't think he's gonna hear this. He said he wasn't gonna listen to his own podcast, but for a while, we're gonna talk about, uh, let's see. Uh, we can talk about dildos and, uh, and anal sex since he just got. All right. Sorry, his, I can't do right, you. I, I can't. Okay, all right. That. Headphones yeah, yeah, don't say it. Yeah, all right, we're done. Sorry, we're, right. we were, we were, we were I talking. Madonna. Nice. Hello, Madonna. I love Madonna. I got <laughs> some Beatles. Because you got to. But it's. But look, it's the Apple Beatles. Yeah, it looks like a butt from here, dude. Looks oh, it's like an, an apple. It looks like apple. a uh, apple bottom girl. <laughs> apple bottom girl. Yeah, this one's clean. And then this, I found this at. The flea market, the purga. It's two 
What? Cowboys kissing. What? Yeah. Yeah, Kirk Douglas is in it. It's called The Brotherhood. It's the soundtrack. Dude. So Kirk Douglas is kissing another man. So Brokeback Mountain wasn't the first, dude. No, sir. This twist. Was in, uh, Historical this was in, like, twist. This like, 50s or 60s. I just saw this, and I saw Kirk Douglas's name on it. I was like, I got to get this. These two dudes are making out. <laughs> dude, you gotta. I got some people that want to see that, dude. You're going to have Well, you know what? We'll have this. I'll just post it and show them later. Oh, I'll send you a picture of it. I'll, I'll give you the record. I don't care. I think it was like a quarter. Dude, I um, I I use Discogs. Have you have you ever used Discogs? No. What's up? So so Discogs is like a website. I don't know if it's like .net or .org .com, but it's disc and then OGS, and it's uh it's kind of like a like a cataloging site, right? You know how you can go on to like YouTube, Instagram, pretty much anywhere and type in the name of a song and sample it or look it up or whatever. So yeah. Discogs is the same thing for vinyls, right? People go in there, they document it very well, they take good pictures. And if you own that record, that release here, that release continent, etc., cetera, uh, you can pull up the exact type and add it to your library. And then it, pr it prices it too, because people buy and sell on Discogs. And so you can price your whole collection once your once your catalog is done, and so is and then you can sell stuff. It's just really cool, man. Discogs. That's dope. It's Discog. I'm gonna write that down. Discogs. Yeah. I'm gonna text it to you, so don't. You can like it if you want, just so I know you care. On this uh, D D I S C O G. C O G S. Yeah. D I S C D O G S. Or, or, if, I it, if I spelled it wrong, you can correct it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay, cool. <sighs> I think I need to wrap it up, brother. Yeah, man, I'm good. Um, let's try to do these more often, man. When you have time. Oh uh, yeah, I'm good with that, dude. I'm I'm good. Like uh, Sundays are like this time time of date is good for me. Uh, so are we still on for next week with Adam? We're gonna talk about conspiracy theories and my, what the hell is that? That's the baby from Dinosaurs. It is the baby from Dinosaur. Do you have any other <laughs> of those characters? Man, have you watched Dinosaurs lately? No. Dude, it's way before it's time. They talk about war. They talk about drugs. It's pretty good, man. It's uh, Yeah, I do remember it being a little edgy and dark. Yeah, it's good. I watched it. We, My wife and I watched it like... I think we binged it when it was on Netflix right before she was pregnant. And I just remember, I was like, damn, this is crazy good. I was like, wow, I understand why it got canceled in the 90s for sure. I'm, I'm watching Mars season two right now. And that's pretty good. Mars? Uh -huh. Have you seen Ratchet? No. Oh, you gotta it. sounds watch it. funny. Dude, it's good. It's fucked up. It's crazy. It's about Ratchet people? No, it's about, you. have you ever seen One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest or read the book? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's a prequel. It has nothing to do with that book, but it's about Nurse Ratchet from that series, for from that uh, book. And That's movie. amazing, dude. She was like my favorite character, dude. It dude, was like the evil this is nurse. Like, so this is apparently her genesis, right? But man, all I know is my wife and I were like we're the binge champions, and we watched it all in one night. I think it's like nine episodes, hour long episodes, it's and we possible. both took turns. We both took turns sleeping the next day, like taking naps with our son the next day because we stayed up all night watching it. It was like, I think four, three or four in the morning we finished it. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to watch. We watched uh, probably two or three episodes at my mother-in-law's house while my son was sleeping, napping today. So I'm like, I want to watch it again already. But it's the people who wrote and created, I guess, American Horror Story. So they use the same. They use Sarah Paulson as Ratchet. Wow. Uh, it's pretty it's good, man. It's it was it was it was right up my alley. But um, yeah, my mother yeah. introduced me to them. But yeah, yeah, we can get out of here. Um, I just Mar you said Mars. Yeah, yeah, Mars. Okay, I'm gonna check it out. Put yeah. it in my queue. Okay. Pretty good. Yeah. I'm gonna end it with this. Okay. Hit it. Hit it. What is this? Ah. Uh... <laughs> Dude, I've been posting so many videos of like my face on women's bodies. I cannot I saw, dude, repost posted, this video. Who did you post with? Was it uh was it a superhero? 
Yeah, I did a deep fake with the AI girls, with Thor, with uh The Thor one. At first I I was like You can't tell, yeah. <laughs> at first I was like, why is Joel posting videos of Thor? I never took him for like a comic book movie guy. <laughs> and then I saw I was like, oh fuck, that's his face. Yeah. I was like, oh Yeah, I did Spice Girls, I did fucking uh <laughs> uh the the fucking WAP video. That was crazy. I saw the WAP one too. I like it because your face is on everybody. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need a. I did one of me uh, as little Nikki. I did it and I never posted it. I need Nicki to post Minaj? that shit up. Huh? Little Nikki or Nicki Minaj? Little Nikki. Oh, the okay. Adam Sandler movie. The yeah, Adam yeah. Sandler vehicle. Yes. <laughs> I could see both. <laughs> <laughs> well, shit, man. Uh, yeah. So this coming uh, f was it Sunday, right? The eleventh. I know Sunday it's the eleventh. Yeah, we're gonna be uh, meeting with a Adam. Adam is a. Uh, a uh, uh uh i guess you could call him a public servant and he's got an extensive knowledge of like movies and stuff like that he can talk forever and so we're gonna hit i guess that and social media oh yeah man um i'm pretty well versed in movies but i'll uh i'll get more well versed in uh some uh conspiracy theories i've been looking a lot up lately with without even researching I was looking up a lot of the uh, Pizzagate shit. The... Pizzagate is crazy, dude. You're gonna suck me in with Pizzagate. I, I, I had to put it down, and then I'm I started gonna send reading you. About... I'm gonna send you a guy, a YouTuber that that does like uh, subject reviews and conspiracy theory, and I he's think got you're, good ones. I think you're gonna like him because he's got a Christian background and he sounds street at the same time. So I'll nice. send it to you, Woodward. Yeah, bro, it. for sure. Well, thanks for doing this, man. I'm going to post this probably in the afternoon tomorrow. I'm being lazy. Okay. Yeah. That'll All right, work brother. with me, man. All right. We'll see Peace. you soon. See you next week. Peace. Cheers.